Hello and welcome to part eight of our reading of the book of Jubilee. Once again, if this is your first time on this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. But again, this is part eight of the reading of the book of Jubilee. We're going to be going through chapters 25 through 29. So if you have not read the first chapters before chapter 25, then I would suggest going back to part one and starting from the beginning. Down in the description box, I will have our playlist from the Dark Outpost, which is the playlist that has all of these missing Bible readings, including the Book of Jubilee. So that's where you will find the recap of part one through seven. And once again, if you want to join us on Tuesdays on the Dark Outpost for a deeper discussion into these books, then follow the link down in the description box below. All right, let's get into it. Chapter 25, Rebecca admonishes Jacob not to marry a Canaanitish woman and Rebecca's blessings. In the second year of this first week in the Jubilee, Rebekah called Jacob her son and spake unto him, saying, My son, do not take thee a wife of the daughters of Canaan, as Esau thy brother took him two wives of the daughters of Canaan. And they have embittered my soul with all their unclean deeds, for all their deeds are fornication and lust, and there is no righteousness with them, for their deeds are evil. So again, this is talking about the Canaanites, which we've talked about extensively on this channel, as well as the Dark Outpost. Basically, the whole battle in our world today is still, as it has been, the Israelites versus the Canaanites. And I, my son, love thee exceedingly, and my heart and my affection bless thee every hour of the day and watch of the night. And now, my son, hearken to my voice, and do the will of thy mother, and do not take thee a wife of the daughters of this land, but only of the house of my father, and my father's kindred. Thou wilt take thee a wife of the house of my father, and the Most High God will bless thee, and thy children will be righteous generation and a holy seed. And then spake Jacob to Rebekah his mother, and he said unto her, Behold, mother, I am nine weeks of years old. And I neither know nor have touched any woman, nor have I betrothed myself to any, or even think of taking me a wife of the daughters of Canaan. For I remember, mother, the words of Abraham our father, for he commanded me not to take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, but to take me a wife from the seed of my father's house and from my kindred. So again, Abraham is Jacob's grandfather, and Rebekah is um, Isaac, Jacob's father's first cousin once removed. So they want him to stay within this particular bloodline. And for Jacob, I think everybody knows, especially if you come from a Christian background, he will produce the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse six, I have heard before that daughters have been born to Laban, thy brother, and I have set my heart on them to take a wife from amongst them. For this reason I have guarded myself in my spirit against sinning or being corrupted in all my ways throughout all the days of my life. For with regard to lust and fornication, Abraham my father gave me many commands. And despite all that he hath commanded me, these two and twenty years my brother hath striven me, and spoke frequently to me, and said, My brother, take a wife, a sister of my two wives, but I refuse to do as he hath done. I swear before thee, mother, that all the days of my life I will not take me a wife from the daughters of the seed of Canaan, and I will not act wickedly as my brother hath done. Fear not, mother, be assured that I shall do thy will and walk in uprightness and not corrupt my ways forever. And thereupon she lifted up her face to heaven and extended the fingers of her hands and opened her mouth and blessed the Most High God, who had created the heaven and the earth, and she gave him thanks and praised. And she said, Blessed be the Lord God, and may his holy name be blessed forever and ever, who hath given me Jacob as a pure son and a holy seed. For he is thine, and thine shall make his seed continually and throughout all the generations forevermore. Bless him, O Lord, and place in my mouth the blessing of the righteousness, that I may bless him. And at that hour, when the spirit of righteousness descended into her mouth, she placed both her hands on the head of Jacob and said, Blessed art thou, Lord of righteousness and God of ages. 
and may he bless thee beyond all the generations of men. May he give thee, my son, the path of righteousness, and reveal righteousness to thy seed. And may he make thy sons many during thy life, and may they arise according to the number of the months of the year. Okay, here we go. The 12 tribes of Israel from Jacob. How many months do we have in a year? 12. How many apostles did Jesus have? 12. And may their sons become many and great beyond the stars of heaven, and their number be more than the sand of the sea. And may he give this godly land, as he said he would give it to Abraham and to his seed after him always. And may they hold it as a possession forever. And may I see born unto thee, my son, blessed children during my life, and a blessed and holy seed may all thy seed be. And as thou hast refreshed my mother's spirit during my life, the womb of her and the bear thee blessed thee, my affection and my breast bless thee, and my mouth and my tongue praise thee greatly. Increase and spread over the earth. And may thy seed be perfect in the joy of heaven and earth forever, and may thy seed rejoice. And on the great day of peace, may it have peace. And may thy name and thy seed endure to all the ages, and may the Most High God be their God. And may the God of righteousness dwell with them, and by them may his sanctuary be built unto all the ages. Blessed be he that blessed thee, and all the flesh that curseth thee falsely, may it be cursed. And she kissed him and said to him, May the Lord of the wor world love thee, as the heart of thy mother and her affection rejoice in thee and bless thee. And she ceased from blessing. This brings us to chapter 26. Jacob obtains the blessing of the firstborn. And in the seventh year of this week, Isaac called Esau his older son and said unto him, I am old, my son, and behold, my eyes are dim in seeing, and I know not the day of my death. So again, Esau and Jacob are twins. Um, Esau came out first, therefore he is the elder son. And as we know from ancient culture, and not so ancient culture, actually, this was still done only a few hundred years ago. The oldest son carried the inheritance of an estate. He was like the bloodline of the family. And last week we read about how um, Esau came in and wanted food. Jacob was making food and he gave him, it was a famine, so food was scarce. And Jason, Jacob basically asked Esau to give up his birthright so that Jacob could carry the birthright. All right. I'm so glad we don't do that now. I'm glad all children are kind of honored in that as well. And I am the oldest, but I am a female, so I know it's a little different. It was different for girls for a very, very long time. Very glad we live in modern times now. So verse 2. And now take thy hunting weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out in the field and hunt and catch me venison, my son, and make me savory meat, such as my soul loveth, and bring it to me that I may eat, and that my soul may be blessed thee before I die. But Rebekah heard Isaac speak to Esau, and Esau went forth early to the field and hunt and catch and bring home to his father. And Rebekah called Jacob her son and said unto him, Behold, I heard Isaac thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Hunt for me and make me savory meat, and bring it to me that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before I die. And now, my son, obey my voice, that in which I command thee. Go to thy flock, and fetch me two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat and bless thee before the Lord, before he die, and that thou may be blessed. So this is some family drama going on. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Mother, I shall not withhold anything which my father would eat and which would please him only. I fear my mother that he will recognize my voice and wish to touch me. And thou knowest that I am smooth, and Esau my brother is hairy, and I shall appear before his eyes as an evildoer, and shall do a deed which he had not commanded me, and he will be wroth with me, and I shall bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. And Rebekah his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice. And Jacob obeyed the voice of Rebekah his mother, and went and fetched two good and fat kids of goats, and brought them to his mother, and she made them savory meat, such as he loved. And Rebekah took the goodly remnant of Esau, her older son, which was with her in the house, and she clothed Jacob, her younger son, with them. 
and she put the skins of the kids upon his hands and on the exposed parts of his neck. And she gave the meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hands of her son Jacob. And Jacob went into his father and said, I am thy son, I have done according as thou badest me, arise and sit and eat of that which I have caught, father, that my soul may be blessed. And Isaac said to his son, How hast thou found so quickly, my son? And Jacob said, Because the Lord thy God caused me to find. And Isaac said unto him, Come near, that I may feel thee, my son, if thou art my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because it was the dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception that Isaac discerned not, for his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's, so that he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my son Esau? And he said, I am thy son. And he said, Bring near to me that I may eat that of which thou hast caught, my son, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And Isaac his father said unto him, Come near and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his ramnet, and he blessed him, and he said, Behold, the smell of my son is the smell of a fulfilled which the Lord hath blessed. And may the Lord give thee the dew of heaven, and the dew of the earth, and plenty of corn and oil. Let nations serve thee, and people bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. And may all the blessings wherewith the Lord hath blessed me and blessed Abraham my father be imparted to thee and thy seed forever. Cursed be he that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of the blessing, his son Jacob, and Jacob had gone forth from Isaac his father, and he hid himself, and Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also made a savory meat and brought it to his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac's father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said unto him, I am thy firstborn, thy son Esau. I have done as thou hast commanded me. And Isaac was very greatly astonished and said, Who is he that hath hunted and caught and brought it to me? And I have eaten all before thou comest and have blessed him. And he shall be blessed in all of his seed forever. And it came to pass, when Esau heard the words of his father, Isaac, that he cried with exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even also, father. And he said unto him, Thy brother came in with guile, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Now I know why his name is named Jacob. Supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me, father? And Isaac answered unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren I have given to him for servants. And with plenty of calm and wine and oil I have strengthened him. And what shall now I do for thee, my son? And Esau said to Isaac his father, Hast thou but one blessing, O father? Bless me even also, father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac answered and said unto him, Behold, far from the dew of the earth shall be thy dwelling, and far from the dew of the heaven from above. And by thy sort wilt thou live, and thou wilt serve thy brother. And it came to pass, when thou becomest great, and dost shake his yoke from off thy neck. Thou wilt sin a complete sin unto death, and thy seed will be rooted out from under heaven. And Esau kept threatening Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And he said in his heart, May the days of mourning for my father now come, so that I may slay my brother Jacob. That's really sad. That's a really sad situation. I'm really glad. I I know in my family, and I hope in most families, that as far as inheriting a birthplace within your family, it's pretty much divided up equally among children. So that's that's really heart, heart-wrenching for Esau. So now we're going to come to chapter 27. Rebekah induces Isaac to send Jacob to Mesopotamia, Jacob's dream and a view at Bethel. And the words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah in a dream. 
And Rebekah sent and called Jacob, her younger brother, and said unto him, Behold, Esau, thy brother, will take vengeance on thee, so to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, and flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's anger turneth away. And he remove his anger from thee, and forget all that thou hast done. Then I will send and fetch for thee from thence. And Jacob said, I am not afraid. If he wisheth to kill me, I will kill him. But she said unto him, Let me not be bereft of both my sons in one day. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, thou knowest that my father hath become old, and doth not see, because his eyes are dull. And if I leave him, it will be evil in his eyes, because I leave him and go away from you. And my father will be angry and will curse me. I will not go. When he sendeth me, then only will I go. And Rebekah said to Jacob, I will go in and speak to him, and he will send thee away. And Rebekah went in and said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the two daughters of Heth, whom he saw hath taken him as wives. And if Jacob take a wife from among the daughters of the land of such as these, for what purpose do I further live? For the daughters of Canaan are evil. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and abonished him and said unto him, Do not take thee a wife of any of these daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to Mesopotamia, to the house of Bethuel, my mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and increase and multiply thee that thou mayest become a company of nations and give thee the blessings of my father Abraham to thee and thy seed after thee, that thou mayest inherit the land of thy journeying and all the land which God gave to Abraham. Go, my son, in peace. And Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Mesopotamia, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's mother, so his uncle's house. And it came to pass, after Jacob had arisen to go to Mesopotamia, that the spirit of Rebekah was grieved after her son, and she wept. And Isaac said to Rebekah, My sister, weep not on account of Jacob, my son, for he goeth in peace, and in peace he will return. So Rebekah is Isaac's first cousin once removed, and his wife, obviously, it was very common for them to marry cousins, and he calls her sister here. I know people have brought this up because we see this in a lot of these biblical pieces where they call them sister or brother, and it's not saying that that's his actual sister. It's more of a, from what I understand, like a familiar term, like an endearing term to call someone. So I just wanted to mention that right now. Rebecca was not Isaac's sister. She was his first cousin once removed. The Most High God will preserve him from all evil and will be with him, for he will not forsake him all his days. For I know that his ways will be prospered in all things, wherever he goeth, until he return in peace to us, and we see him in peace. Fear not on his account, my sister, for he is on the upright path, and he is a perfect man. He is faithful and will not perish. Weep not. And Isaac comforted Rebekah on account of her son Jacob and blessed him. And Jacob went from the well of the oath to go to Haran on the first year of the second week in the forty-fourth jubilee. And he came to Luz on the mountains, that is, Bethel, on the new moon of the first month of this week. And he came to a place at even, and turned from the way to the west on the road that night he slept there, for the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and laid it at his head under a tree, and he was journeying alone, and he slept. And he dreamt that night, and behold, a ladder set up on earth, and the top of it reached the heaven, and behold, the angels of the Lord ascended and descended on it. Behold, the Lord stood upon it. So this is Jacob's ladder. I'm very familiar with this story. A lot of people, a lot of more um, liberal Christians or progressive Christians or people, Christians who see the Bible as more allegory or maybe that it's been a little misinterpreted, believe that Jacob's ladder is actually about our energy points in our bodies. People can call them chakras you, whatever you want to call them, that that's actually referring to a certain energy point. Um, I'm very familiar with this because of my time spent in India. So again, if that's something you want me to do an episode on, on all the energy points, I will be more than happy to do that with you guys. So just let me know. And he spake to Jacob and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the land whereon thou art sleeping to thee shall I give it and thy seed after thee. 
and thy seed will be as dust of the earth, and thou wilt increase to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, will all the families of the nations be blessed. And behold, I shall be with thee, and shall keep thee whithsoever thou goest, and I shall bring thee again into this land in peace, for I shall not leave thee until I do everything that I told thee of. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Truly this place is the house of the Lord, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, Dreadful is this place, which is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate to heaven. And this also goes back to, again, with these energy points. We talked about this in the Steve Anderson episode about the idea of the rapture. And that for a very long time, Christians believed that the, la- the rapture was a very literal lifting of bodies up into the heavens, which I think would be extremely traumatic to witness. But what we're understanding now is it's not a lifting of the body, but a lifting of the spirit. That those of us who are waking up, our consciousness is rising from like 3D to 5D. And so he's talking about the gate of heaven. That could be the opening of the, uh, the pineal gland which is at the top of the uh, energy points, which is the opening of our consciousness or our spirit. Again, that's just down to each person's interpretation of this text. So please no arguing in the the comment section. It's just an interpretation. You can believe whatever you wanna believe, that's your free will. Um, But again, if you guys want me to go into this deeper from a more spiritual um, side as to these energy points, then let me know and I'll be more than happy to do that. So verse 26, And Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone which he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar for a sign as he poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the place was Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow unto the Lord, saying, If the Lord will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I may come again to my father's house in peace, Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set up as a pillar for a sign in this place shall be the Lord's house. And of all that thou givest me, I shall give the tenth to thee, my God. Again, we've already seen this giving 10% or a tenth to God as tithing. Abraham did that as well. So now we're coming to chapter 28. Jacob's marriage to Leah and Rachel, his children and riches. And he went on his journey and came to the land of the east to Laban, the brother of Rebekah. And he was with them and served him for Rachel, his daughter, one week. And in the first year of the third week, he said unto him, Give me my wife for whom I have served these seven years. And Laban said unto Jacob, I will give thee thy wife. And Laban made a feast and took Leah, his eldest daughter, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. And gave her Zilpan, his handmaiden, for a handmaiden. And Jacob did not know, for he thought that she was Rachel. And he went in unto her, and behold, she was Leah. And Jacob was angry with Laban and said unto him, Why hast thou dealt thus with me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel and not for Leah? Why hast thou wronged me? Take thy daughter, and I will go, for thou hast done evil to me. For Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah. For Leah's eyes were weak, but her form was very handsome. But Rachel had beautiful eyes and a beautiful and very handsome form. And Laban said to Jacob, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the elder, and it is not right to do this. For thus it is ordained and written in the heavenly tables, that no one should give his younger daughter before the elder. But the elder one giveth first and after the younger, and the man who doth is so, they set down guilt against him in heaven, and none is righteousness that doeth this thing, for the deed is evil before the Lord. And commanded thou the children of Israel that they do not do this thing, let them neither take nor give the younger before they have given the elder, for it is very wicked. And Laban said to Jacob, Let the seven days of the feast for this one pass by, and I shall give you Rachel, that thou mayest serve me another seven years, and that thou mayest pasture my sheep as thou didst in the former week. And on the day when the seven days of the feast of Leah had passed, Laban gave Rachel to Jacob, that he might serve him another seven years. And he gave Rachel Bilham, the sister of Zilpath, as a handmaiden. And he served yet other seven years for Rebekah, for Leah had been given to him for nothing. And the Lord opened the womb of Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob a son. And he called his name Reuben, 
on the fourteenth day of the ninth month in the first year of the third week. But the womb of Rachel was closed. For the Lord saw that Leah was hated and Rachel loved. And again Jacob went into Leah, and she conceived and bare him a second son. And he called his name Simeon on the twenty-first of the tenth month in the third year of this week. And again Jacob went into Leah, and she conceived and bare him a third son, and he called his name Levi in the new moon of the first month, in the sixth year of this week. And again Jacob went into unto her, and she conceived, and bare him a fourth son, and she called his name Judah, on the fifteenth of the third month of the first year of the fourth week. And on account of all of this, Rachel envied Leah, for she did not bear, and she said to Jacob, Give me children. And Jacob said, Have I withheld from thee the fruits of thy womb? Have I forsaken thee? And when Rachel saw that Leah had borne four sons to Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, she said unto him, Go in unto Bilhan my handmaid, and she will conceive and bear a son unto me. And she gave him Bilham her handmaid to wife, and he went in unto her, and she conceived and bare him a son. And she called his name Dan, on the ninth of the sixth month, in the sixth year of the third week. And Jacob went in again to Bilhan a second time, and she conceived and bare Jacob another son. And Rachel called his name Naphtali on the fifth week of the seventh month of the second year of the fourth week. And when Leah saw that she had become sterile and did not bear, she envied Rachel. And she also gave her handmaid Zilpah to Jacob to wife, and she conceived and bare a son. And Leah called his name Gad on the twelfth of the eighth month and third in the third year of the fourth week. And he went in again unto her, and she conceived and bare him a second son. And Leah called his name Asher on the second of the eleventh month in the fifth year of the fourth week. And Jacob went unto Leah, and she conceived and bare him a son. And she called his name Ishakar on the fourth of the fifth month in the fourth year of the fourth week, and she gave him to nurse. This is literally like a soap opera, <laughs> but I know these are the 12 tribes of Israel that we're going through, but it literally reads like days of our lives. I don't know about you guys, but wow. And Jacob went in again unto her, and she con conceived and bare two children, a son and a daughter. And she called the son Zebulon, and the name of the daughter Dinya, in the seventh week of the seventh month, in the sixth year of the fourth week. And the Lord was gracious to Rachel, and he opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Joseph. And on the new moon of the fourth month in the sixth year of this fourth week. And in the days when Joseph was born, Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wives and son, and let me go to my father Isaac, and let me make me a house, for I have completed the years in which I have served thee for thy two daughters, and I will go to the house of thy father. And Laban said to Jacob, Tarry with me for thy wages, and pasture my flock for me again, and take thy wages. And they agreed with one another that he should give him as his wages those of the lambs and kids, which were born black and spotted and white, were to be his wages. And all the sheep brought forth spotted and speckled, and black and variously marked, that they brought forth again lambs like themselves, and all that were spotted were Jacob's, and those which were not were Laban's. And Jacob's possessions multiplied exceedingly, and he possessed oxen and sheep and asses and camels, and men servants and maid servants. And Laban and his sons envied Jacob. And Laban took his sheep from him, and he observed him with evil intent. So this brings us to chapter 29, Jacob's flight with his family, his covenant with Laban. And boy, does Jacob have a pretty big family now. And it came to pass when Rachel bore Joseph that Laban went to shear his sheep, for they were distant from him in three days' journey. And Jacob saw Laban was going to shear his, his sheep. And Jacob called Leah and Rachel and spake kindly unto them and said that they should come with him to the land of Canaan. For he told them how he had seen everything in a dream even all that he had spoken unto him, that he should return to his father's house. And they said, To every place whither thou goest, we will go with thee. And Jacob blessed the God of Isaac his father, and the God of Abraham his father's father. 
and he arose and mounted his wives and his children and took all his possessions and crossed the river and came to the land of Gilead. And Jacob hid his intentions from Laban and told him not. And in the seventh year of the fourth week, Jacob turned towards Gilead in the first month and on the 21st thereof. And Laban pursued after him and overtook Jacob in the mountains of Gilead in the third month of the 13th. Thereof. And the Lord did not suffer him to inquire Jacob, for he appeared to him in a dream by night, and Laban spoke to Jacob. And on the fifteenth of those days Jacob made a feast for Laban, and for all who came with him, and Jacob swore to Laban that day, and Laban also to Jacob, that neither should cross the mountain of Gilead, to the other with evil purpose. And he made there a heap for a witness, whereof the name of the place is called the heap of the witness after this heap. But before they used to call it the land of Gilead, the land of the Rephaim, for it was a land of the Rephaim, and the Rephaims were born there giants, whose height was ten, nine, eight, down to seven cubics. And their habitation was from the land of the children of Ammon, to Mount Hermon, to the seats of their kingdoms, were Karnain, and Ashtaroth, and Edari, and Mishur, and Beyond. And the Lord destroyed them because of the evil of their deeds, for they were malignant. And the Amorites dwelt in their steed, wicked and sinful. And there is no people today which hath wrought the full of all their sins. And they have no longer length of life on the earth. And Jacob sent away Laban, and he departed into Mesopotamia, the land of the east. And Jacob returned to the land of Gilead. And he passed over the Jabbok in the ninth month, on the eleventh thereof. And on that day Esau his brother came to him, and he was reconciled to him and departed from him unto the land of Sarir, but Jacob dwelt in tents. And in the first year of the fifth week in this jubilee, he crossed the Jordan and dwelt beyond the Jordan. And he pastured his sheep from the sea of the heap unto Beth Shean, unto Doeth, and unto the forest of Akrabin. And he sent to his father Isaac all his substance, clothing and food and meat and drink and milk and butter and cheese and some dates of the valley. And to his mother Rebekah also four times a year, between the times of the months, between the plowing and reaping, and between autumn and the rain season, and between winter and spring and the tower of Abraham. For Isaac had returned to the well of the oath, and gone up to the tower of his father, and dwelt there apart from his son Esau. And for in the days where Jacob went to Mesopotamia, Esau took himself a wife, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, and he gathered together all the flocks of his father and his wives, and went up and dwelt on Mount Seir, and left Isaac his father at the well of the oath alone. And Jacob went up from the well of the oath, and dwelt in the tower of Abraham his father on the mountains of Hebron. And thither Jacob sent all that he did send to his father and his mother from time to time, all they needed, and they blessed Jacob with all their heart and all their soul. And that ends chapter 29 that's where we're going to stop it today that leaves us with a good even like 20 chapters to go so we'll pick up next week with chapter 30. all right leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below i hope you guys are having a fantastic week thank you again to josh mckay for doing our music if you would like to purchase our opening song there is a link in the description box below and thank you again to todd roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys I'll talk to you soon. Bye.